You are now listening to the Divorce Diaries podcast with your host, well, that's a secret. No names, ages, or any other identifying characteristics will be used as we protect the young and innocent. You'll be taken on a journey as one man considers getting a divorce or remaining married. The Divorce Diaries daily entries chronicle the decision-making processes in real time as they unfold day by day. He hopes to add a bit of clarity to his sometimes muddled mess of a marriage. Cheating, overspending, sex, sadness and betrayal are the characteristics of this marriage. Is he making the right choice? Welcome to the Divorce Diaries. Entire seasons are released on Patreon weeks before anywhere else. At Divorce Diaries Podcast Patreon page. Link below in description. Now for today's episode. Hey Divorce Diaries. Here for another diary entry. What a great, great day. Um, it's not so great, honestly, but isn't it all about perspective? Uh, yesterday, well, this morning I just dropped off uh, the youngest one in, uh, back at home, and she's um, she's having a difficult time uh, because she's growing up way, way, way faster than I thought because of this situation, and I was the same age as she is when my parents uh, separated and ultimately divorced. It's a very tough place being uh, about nine. It's a really tough place. Because when you're that age, you're old enough to understand certain things, but then you are also too young to understand other things. So you're in this weird place of like awareness and understanding, and you bounce back and forth between the two. And um, you bounce back and forth between awareness and understanding and ignorance. And the line is so blurred because you're you're coming of age, but you haven't come to age yet. And you also might be able to understand some aspects of a problem, like people splitting up. You understand that they're splitting up, but you don't really understand what it's like to love or commit to someone and now then split apart. So you, it's, it's really difficult. Um, the extent of the splitting apart that you know is, you know, the immense pain that you might have when someone moves away. So I'm just sad and also sobered to watch the transition that my youngest is going through as she becomes more aware by force or too soon. But what's too soon? Um, if our parents would have waited to get a divorce, then okay, maybe there would be some lessons that she didn't learn um, at a specific time and then lessons, lessons that she does learn at other times. And it's just, it sucks and it's beautiful watching someone grow. And when it's your child and they're growing and they're learning things like when you realize your dad isn't a superhero as a kid, that's a really tough one. When your father, not only is he not a superhero, yes, he's the man that picks you up and puts you on his shoulders and carries you places and, and saved you that one time uh, and caught you when you fell off your bike. He's just larger than life and he's so strong, yet he's so gentle. Um, I know I was that to my kids and then my kids ultimately found out that dad is a flawed human being. I'm a thoroughly, thoroughly flawed human being that makes the biggest mistakes, um, some of the biggest mistakes anyone could make. And somehow they're supposed to reconcile the fact that I meant well. A tough pill to swallow in most situations that someone is a, um, that someone isn't all of what you think or what you hoped or what you want and maybe even need him to be. And you know, as, as a dad, I, I don't know how many fathers out there feel this way, but as a father, you definitely, um, I feel like a failure. I know logically that I cannot make anyone, let alone my children, happy. But putting that into practice in my daily thought processes is more difficult. And it's very difficult when you make big mistakes big, big mistakes, and you uh, 
you have to account for those. It's tough, especially when you, like, didn't know what you were doing when you did it. Or like in my case, I might have leaned in really hard in the direction of um, a conviction that I had. Like, like the example I'll use is, um, I've said it before in these diary entries, but my son was, um, in my personal opinion, he, he was struggling with drugs, marijuana specifically. And I felt that his respect, paying attention, possibly mental capacity was... It was affected, basically the way that people that get high regularly um, are affected. So I felt that he was manifesting um, those things or they were exhibiting and showing themselves in his life. And I said, look, in order to live here, my wife and I had two criteria. Hers was he had to go to college and mine was he had to stop smoking. And he was a minor child still at that point. And he said, OK, to both things. But I found on some security cameras around the house that he was still smoking behind the house. And I went to my wife and said, you know, I've seen him on the back. He's been at the back of the house and he's smoking and he's deliberately disobeying me. Uh, he's got a problem with authority. The world is going to smack him down if he doesn't. If he can't listen here, if he takes that out into the real world, it's going to be a lot less forgiving than it is here with mom and dad. Um. And I leaned in heavily. I leaned in on him. I don't know what your deal is. Get better at this. Don't disrespect me. The world isn't going to be so nice. All those things to him. And I saw him a couple more times. I'm still doing it. And I'm, I just leaned fully in with my discipline. And you're not going to be successful in life if you keep doing this. And lots of stuff. And I'm sorry I'm speaking so slowly, but. I'm just kind of reliving it in my head as I'm as I'm recounting it in this diary entry. And then he drops a bomb on me and he says, because um, I was going around, and I, was, I was telling my wife as well, you know, the world is going to be cruel to him. And we need to put our heads together and figure out how to help him out and, and discipline him effectively. And what should we do next? And what should we do again? Should we take his phone? Should we do this to that? And... Um, talked to her maybe three, four times over the course of a couple of weeks. And then finally, when I was about to lean in and go into my son really hard again, he changed my whole worldview because he says to me, dad, mom is the one that told me I could smoke. She said, if you're going to smoke, don't do it over on the school property. Just come back and do it here where it's safe. And Right then, I just realized, um, which is one of the principal reasons that we're getting divorced, not because my wife told him to do something behind my back, but that my wife is the type of person that goes behind my back. And when she knows that her son is being yelled at by his dad repeatedly for him not listening and obeying, she didn't even want to say, hey, hey, I'm the one that don't don't yell at him anymore. I'm the one that actually told him to smoke and to smoke behind the house. Knowing that I was laying down and going to bed with a person that was going to continually let her son get yelled at, <clears throat> punished, and watching my son and I's relationship deteriorate because he's, he's just becoming so upset at me for trying to control him and he also was covering for his mom by not saying she's the one that told me. He didn't want to throw her under the bus, which I totally understand. And on a level, I do appreciate that. But it hurt our relationship so badly. And he and I have talked about it. And it's like, he's like, you know, you would always say one thing and mom would say another. And I told him the last time I saw him, and I, I hope I, if I get to see him again or not, I don't know. But I said, I thought that when I said something and mom agreed that we would support each other, I didn't know 
that mom was going behind my back. And had you told me the first time, I would have understood that my fury or my anger or whatever it was should be directed towards your mom, not you. I wouldn't have held you accountable. You were just doing what your other parent told you to do. So you technically, in, in a way, technically you weren't doing anything wrong. You were doing what your mom told you. And what your mom told you to do does go in direct, it's in direct contrast to what your dad told you to do, but I didn't know that. So I'm just yelling at you. I'm thinking that you understand. We said you can't smoke weed and we said you need to go to college. But in fact, I said you couldn't smoke weed and we said you had to go to college. So that's why now with the way that the marriage is now, it's so easy for me to not speak to my wife, not answer her phone calls, not answer her text messages unless it's really about the kids. Let things go to voicemail and follow up with them later because now I understand my wife and she is a liar. She's a liar. She lies. She covers up other lies with more lies and she omits. Um, my therapist is very good with her words and she says, your wife just isn't forthcoming with information. Okay. She's not forthcoming with information. I'll go with that. Who wants to be married to or connected to or talk to or be around someone that's not forthcoming? Like if we had little video game signs over our heads and there were two signs that were over people's heads. One was honest and one was dishonest. Who would you want to talk to? The one, the person that walked around with the little badge on that says honest or the person that walks around with the badge on that says dishonest? Well, that's it. My wife is dishonest. So I don't want to be around her. It really hurt us as a family. And I hate hindsight because hindsight is both very clear and it's also very frustrating because in hindsight, my wife has always done this covert lie, sneak, hide. She's always done it. But I just justified it away. She must, she must have done it because of this or that. Either way, she did it. I'm looking forward to this divorce. Wow, that was the Divorce Diaries podcast. The Daily Saga will continue tomorrow. The full season's episodes are on Patreon now. Subscribe for early access. Click the Patreon link in the description. Hopefully these entries help our anonymous recorder as a form of his own personal therapy. That's his hope and his intention. Will these recordings of life's curveballs lead this family to the best resolution in the end? We'll keep listening. New episodes are released daily on all podcast players, but all episodes are available on Patreon at Divorce Diaries Podcast Patreon page. Until next time.